Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices for Muslims by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi, may Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Muslim Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'as. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, bakhir. MashaAllah, good to see you. <laughs> Sheikh, now we were discussing sujood in the last episode, and we discussed, uh, you know, it being a rukun, that, you know, the dhikr has to be, you know, recited properly when you're in sujood stationary. I wanted to ask you in regards to something I've noticed between uh, me and the way I perform Salah and some of my uh, friends who, don't, who are not Shia. After we perform the second sujood, we get up and we, 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 we go back to the resting position and then we go for Qiyam, then we stand up. In the, I've noticed my friends who are not Shia, in the first raqah, if there's no tashahud, after the second sujood, they get up and they stand up straight away. So, could you explain, um, in in terms of what, what the Sayyid, uh, Sayyid al Marja, what he has to say in regards to this? A'udhu billahi as-sami'i al-alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the first and third rak'ah of the salah where there are no tashahud except uh, the third rak'ah of Maghrib yeah. that's the exception but in overall in Salat al-Dhuhr, Asr and Isha where there are no tashahud in between um, we as followers of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam uh, must sit up um, after the second sajda yes. uh, the Sayyid says it's uh, as a precaution that you must sit up, um, let's say for two seconds, three seconds, motionless, stationary, and then you get up for the next rak'ah. Yes. Unlike, as you've mentioned, other sects of Islam, when they quickly from the sujood, they get up mm -hmm. and head for the next rak'ah yes, yes, yes. without any uh, resting position, as it's mentioned, uh, the name of this uh, yes. uh, act in salah. Uh, Jalsat al-istiraha so, Or Julus al-istiraha So no. you sit the, for a second, few seconds You take a rest and then you get up for the next rak'ah uh, We had similar thing uh, in between the two sajda So when you head up from the first sajda You also sit, uh, sit for yes. two seconds, three seconds And then you go back to the sujood yes. Again for the second sajda Here is no, it's, it's after the second sajda And before going to the, to the next Rak'ah. Yes. So you must sit, uh, sit up for two or three seconds, and you take a rest, and then you get up for the next rak'ah. It's wajib, and um, unlike other sects who would not consider consider it as a wajib, but for us we have to sit sit up and uh, you know as a resting position, and then head for the next rak'ah. Mashallah. Sheikhna, you said that sujood is a rukun of salah. What if one person cannot perform the sujood uh, for whatever reason? Is he allowed to um, abort it? Is he allowed to leave it out of the prayer? If one is not able to perform the sujood fully, in other words, to bow down all the way mm -hmm. and place his forehead on the ground, on the turba, in this case, he does his best as much as he can to reach the turba. However, if there are, there are for, let's say, for example, pains in the back, uh, on the neck, for example, there are injuries, for example, yes. and he's not been able to reach the ground with his forehead, then he can place his forehead on an elevated uh, turba. So he raises mm -hmm. the turba up. He puts it, I don't know, a chair or, or a table, and he prays on uh, the turba, he prostrates on, on that turba, which is elevated and raised yes. on a table and, and such like. Um, that's a solution for those who cannot uh, perform the full sujood. Although they can perform other uh, acts in salah, like ruku', like standing upright, for example. All are fine. It's just the sujood. 
you just have to uh, raise the uh, position of the turba and pray, pray on it. And of course, it is wajib for them to um, put all the masajid, you know, the other six masajid, yes. on, the, on the ground. So both palms mm -hmm. on the ground, uh, the two big toes of the feet on the ground. What else we had? Uh, the two knees, again, on the ground. They all must be on the ground as well. It's just the forehead that required a bit of elevation of the turba from the ground. And that's fine. They can perform the salah in this way. Ahsant, mashallah. Sheikhna, what's the ruling if one uh, raises his head from sujood involuntary? This might happen sometimes for those who, some people who might be praying a bit fast. So they actually heading down mm -hmm. from rakur towards the sujood. Sometimes they would bang their forehead on the turba, on the ground, <laughs> and that causes bouncy. Bouncing yes, his head yes, or yes. her head on the ground. If the head bounces on the turba, the first second or time in which the head touches the turba and is removed from the turba without the control of that person, he should try to actually avoid reaching the turba again. Okay. So that's counted as one sujood, although he had said nothing, no dhikr, nothing. Just, you know, uh, placing the head on the turba yes. and then removing without his control, bouncing on the turba. In this situation, he must make sure that it doesn't reach the uh, ground again. Okay. Because that's count as first sajda. sajda yes. So he sits up and then he goes back with the second uh, sajda. However, if he has no control or she has no control and that individual um, touched the turba twice, you know, it's mm -hmm. like uh, bouncing twice on the turba. Without his control, the second sajda is also done, bouncing. In this situation, it is all counted as one sajda, and he sits up again, or she sits up again, and they perf perform the second sajda, and that should be fine. MashaAllah, I mean, I've never gone through that experience. But we do encourage our viewers, please do not rush your salah and make sure you take your time and etiquette and you know, while, while you're, and, and I mean take precaution while you're praying your salah and inshallah you won't have any problems inshallah. Shaykhna, it is very, very well known that uh, non-Shias do not prostrate on a turba but on carpet. Is there any circumstances where the Shia are allowed to prostrate, perform sujood on the carpet? We have a secondary uh, role or hukum thanawi as the ulama state in their fiqh books and that is taqiyya. Okay. Taqiyya is to uh, conceal. conceal your own faith when there's a danger. Mm -hmm. Your life is threatened and you try to protect yourself, your blood, yourself, your family for example. So you, you pretend to be like them, like the other opposite and opponent sects of Islam or other religions, for example. In this case, you can apply taqiyya. Now, with regard to prostration on the carpet, yes, if you are in the state of danger and you fear your, your life or your family life, in this case, um, you can prostrate, prostrate on um, the carpet or rug as they do so and even you can even hand, hand fold it you stand and you do the salah that's fine it's all part of the taqiyya you have no choice um, however if you see them praying on the straw mats the mats in which made by some of the yeah. trees by the leaves of yes, some trees yes. the palm trees by the branches or twigs yes. and so forth mm -hmm. the you about. must pray on that mat Okay. Uh, because that's what we, we are not allowed to pray on these uh, types of mats. Okay. Otherwise, uh, yes, you can apply taqiyya in this situation and you pray on uh, the carpet or the rug. Is there any issue with uh, the color of the turba changing? I mean, when you use a turba, I've had, I've had the turba for quite a long time in my house, and it's not, this, it's not its original color, it's a lot darker. 
Um, is there an issue performing sujood on that? Well, it is mandatory and wajib that when the one prays in, in the salah, that there should be no obstacle between the forehead and the place of sujood. Yes. In other words, if you want to pray on the turbah, you make sure there's no scarf on it. You know, let's say if you're wearing a hat, yes. it doesn't cover all your forehead. You have to make sure that the forehead is visible. Mm, yes. If the sisters are wearing the burqa or the, yes. uh, or the uh, niqab. Uh, niqab, for example, they remove the part in which uh, the forehead is and to allow the sujood to be done on the forehead yes. and not on the niqab or the burqa. Um, so anything else, it could be a child covering the turba with his hand, for example. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure you pray on the clay or the soil or the turba itself and nothing else on it. And of course, um, with regard to the color of the turba, if it changes, that's fine. As long as there is no mass that is visible and covering okay. the turba. It's like the gel. If you apply the gel, yes. let's say Vaseline, if you apply thick gel and you can see there's a, um, yeah. a, a, a cover of, of yes. mass and thick uh, oily uh, material on that, but then you can't pray on it. Yeah. But if it's just the color, just a bit of few, just a bit of you know, you know, remaining of the the, the the foreheads, let's say, oil and so forth, uh, you know, the, the the sweat and so forth, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if it's constituted of a thick mass of uh, um, of dirt, then you have to remove it with a, with the sand, you know, the sandpaper. Exactly with the sandpaper, and then that should be fine. Sheikhna, when we do sujood, is it important that that area is tahar? Purity and tahara is one of the main conditions in every worship. You must be tahir and pure um, in all the worships, um, be it in hajj, be it in umrah when you go there to perform the tawaf and the salat al-tawaf. The daily prayers, even fasting, before you enter the, to, the, to the day of fasting, you must make sure you have the ghusl wajib, the janab ghusl, for example, and such like for the sisters, the wajib ghusl, after their periods and so forth. These are all wajibat for the, for the purpose of uh, the ibadah to be in a pure state. So likewise, yes, the position of the sujood, the turbah or the clay you pray on, or the wood or the grass you pray on must be tahir and pure. And if one side was najis, you can turn on and pray on the side in which it is tahir. That's fine. So it's important that we have to consider. Ahsant, mashallah. Shaykhna, uh, what can we and what can we not perform sujood on? Well, it's mandatory to uh, perform the sujood on the soil initially, the clay, the soil, the earth, what is known as ard, no. the earth itself. That's wajib. And of course, anything that grows from uh, this earth that cannot be eaten. So the grass, we don't eat the grass. Yes. Some of the, uh, the tree leaves that we don't eat, yes. for example. Um, the wood, the, the, yes. the branches and the twigs of the, uh, the trees, for example. I think that, that we don't eat. Also, we don't wear them. Okay. So cotton, so fabrics mainly. Fabrics, we wear them usually. Yes. You know, um, we cannot pray on them. So that's the issue. Just a quick question. It's a personal one. Are we allowed to do sujood on aqiq? Because aqiq is a stone, but we wear that stone. So exactly. are we allowed to do sujood? On no, we cannot. Oh, but okay. there's exception. I'll come, inshallah, later on. Inshallah. Okay. But in. As a first uh, initial hukum, you cannot pray on them. Anything you wear, even metal, oh, yes. you know, they use it as a shield. They wear it in war, yes. in battlefield, for example. I mean, anything you look around you, the gold, the silver, yes, yes. you're not allowed to pray on them. Mm -hmm. um, but other than the earth itself, ard, and uh, other materials in which are grown from the earth, then we can. Even sometimes, uh, with today's technology that they produce from, for example, uh, from the cotton, they mm -hmm. produce a, 
um, tissue, for example. Yes. You can pray on tissue, for example. Okay. Even made from cotton, although you can't. Oh, I do see. Do on cotton because it's... It's, it's fabric, it's part worn. Of the pa but it's worn, exactly. Nobody eats but tissues. you can pray on uh, the tissue itself. Yes. On the paper, you know, the piece of yeah. paper you can pray on, for example, on the wood and so forth. So, Shana, my next question is then, what is the best and most highly recommended thing to uh, prostrate on? The most recommended and rewarding as the hadith says from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, with this regard, he says, إن السجود على تربة أبي عبد الله عليه السلام يخرق الحجب السبع. He says prostrating on the clay or the sand or the soil of Abi Abdullah, Ay al Hussein in Karbala, alayhi salam, removes the seven veils. There are seven veils uh, between us and the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which the a'mal, and especially the prayers, when they are raised by the angels. Because when we pray, the angels raise this amal, this yeah. deed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the best way to make sure that it reaches to that level and stage, and breaks through and penetrates through the seven veils of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he puts, then is to prostrate and do, do the sujood on Turbat al-Husayn alayhi salam which is brought from Karbala. That's it. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. You know, this, this is amazing how important and how blessed is, you know, the, the, the earth and the land of Karbala where Abba Abd al Hussein, salam he uh, sacrificed his life for, for this religion. Uh, thank you very much, Sheikhna, for another wonderful episode. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us. Inshallah, you can see us again on Imam Hussain TV, Ehkam SOS. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.